Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Phil. Um, I'm going to... Um, no, it's right. I, I'm, I'm going to kind of um, follow on from that theme that, uh, that... Picking up from the end of Phil's talk there, which is... There's a theme, I think, which is quite important, and, and what this talk is about is it's a kind of cherry-picking talk. So I've, I've selected just a handful of, of things that I think are, are under the radar in a different way. Okay, and, and why they're under a radar in a different way is that these are things or, you know, some te techniques, technologies, if you will, that are kind of very much part of the landscape of what I'm calling the B2C web, you know, the world of transactional, uh, you know, direct-to-consumer. Um, and, um, you know, I think that they're things which we might have either taken for granted or possibly passed over. Um, and I think that that's actually um, uh, uh, important for us to step back and actually re-engage with some of those things because they are part of this enabling, if you like, this kind of 360-degree approach that, that Phil was talking about, which is, the, which is the thinking outside of the box, thinking beyond the PDF, if you like, thinking about what else we should be engaging with across that whole um, um, kind of 360 degrees of science, you know, rather than just concentrating on, on, on the kind of research outputs and the papers, okay, and that is a theme that, that I think is, 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 broadly speaking, connects all of the talks this morning. So, um, the first piece I wanted to talk about is, um, is search engine optimization, and this is again, you know, you know, I'm not talking about black hat stuff here, but I, I'd quite like to know from from, from the audience, actually, who, you know, who, who has a, a kind of a strategy or a policy in place within their organization for SEO? Is, that, is anybody prepared to, to own up to that? Okay, right, okay, that's good, because um, uh, that means that it's worth me speaking about this for, for a few moments. Um, you know, and, you know, it kind of validates in a way what I'm seeing, which is that there's generally a lack of awareness about SEO and, you know, what, it's, what the benefits are. It is kind of uh, an elephant in the room, if you like. Um, a, that means that there's, there's not enough strategic emphasis being placed on this within our organisations. Um, another one of those things that you know kind of falls through as a consequence of that is that we're often not sure who actually owns our SEO, if we have any at all. Is it is it technical competence? Is it something that the marketing department look after? Um, is it something to do with with our sales team? You know, where does it sit within our organisations? Um, you know, and this kind of plays out from the kind of individual um, uh, perspective of looking at individual publishing companies throughout to kind of to, to a bigger perspective, which is the, which is the kind of industry-wide perspective. You know, we're not discussing this particularly as an industry, and yet this is something which deeply, deeply affects how much traffic we get on all of our websites. It deeply affects usage. Um, and, you know, and being more specific about that, you know, there's one company <laughs> who is directly responsible for something that contributes very, very significantly to your bottom line, because this drives renewals. This is Google, okay? And, you know, we are, as an industry, you know, we're quite good at getting together in a way and solving some of the other problems that, that face us. We've, you know, we've, we've talked about, um, you know, ways of solving the link rot problem, if you like. We've talked about the, the author identity problem and getting together and solving that. We're talking, we've talked about metadata and how to, how to, how to deliver metadata downstream into, in, 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 into other services that make sense in, in the library environment. Um, but we're not coordinating as an industry about, about this big piece, about how we work with Google actually. And I see a lot of publishers having individual conversations with Google, um, scratching their heads, frustration, a few grinding, gnashing teeth because, you know, the rules keep changing. Uh, uh, um, and it's one company that makes up the rules and we all kind of have to, you know, adapt to that individually. So there's just a kind of question there for us uh, as an industry really, which is, which is, you know, do we want to, to have that kind of divide and rule approach um, or, or do we want to get together and think about how we, how we work with this? Um, and, you know, there is a consequence there, too, because, you know, on Google Scholar, you know, in fact, not just Google Scholar, Google generally likes free stuff. It likes anything that's free and open. And so that means, you know, there's always going to be driving traffic towards what we kind of call preprint, which, again, is another one of those kind of quaint, 
<laughs> words that, you know, when we stop printing stuff, are we gonna, what are we going to call it then? Because um, a lot of us have already stopped printing stuff. But, um, you know, the point there is about free content. Google loves free content. And it's driving traffic to free versions or pre-print versions, pre-publication versions of papers instead of to your own websites. Let's just think about, um, I kind of raised Johannes Kepler there for some reason. Um, uh, you know, being a scientist, I think that's probably why. Um, you know, why, what are the benefits? Just so, we, just so we're really, really clear about what, why we need to get this right. Um, you know, I've mentioned already that this is about um, driving, driving usage. That obviously sustains renewals on, a, on, a kind of, on the subscription business model. Um, you know, if you're talking about the kind of per download model, maybe in, including, of course, the, the PDA type of model that Phil mentioned a, a few moments ago, um, you know, this is about driving traffic towards those types of models. It's about lowering that cost per download metric, which we're all very, very familiar with. Um, another sort of side of this is that this is, you know, a potential impact enabler. I'm not necessarily going to say to go so far as to say that this drives impact, that certainly, you know, without people being able to find a paper, you're certainly not going to be generating the kind of impact that, 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 that it should be able to. Um, you know, driving related content sales, um, driving other revenue streams, pay-per-view um, streams, re um, advertising streams. So there's a kind of, there's a theme there, which is, which is um, you know, it's essentially about knowing, it's about being able to connect, connect users to your content, okay? Um, and work with those that well that one big entity principally in, in, in the industry which we not really engage with. Okay, um, the next one is um, is about the robots. <laughs> the robots are coming. Okay, um, and this is this is about data mining. Which is, you know, I always like to say data mining means my data are mine, and your data are mine also. Now, um, we know that uh, you know, recent uh, legislation changes in, in the UK are now sanctioning effectively um, through, through a copyright reform. This is now being sanctioned as something that is, is enabled for, for, for scientists, particularly if we're thinking about, just for a moment, the, the perspective of, of other people, the robots coming in and mining our data. Um, you know, there's some strange things, actually, that I see in the industry here as well. You know, we have um, you know, some of our... Some of our Publishing platforms have have robot traps that cut off access. Um, you know, when they when when we're detecting that kind of activity, it's almost as though we're afraid that our systems can't cope. Somehow, we're living in in the kind of in in the kind of in, you know late 90s where web servers you know were kind of chugging away and, and creaking with steam, and that they couldn't cope with robots accessing them. Um, but you know, this type of thing would be pretty much insane in the B2C world, kind of trying to stop robots from, from coming, trying to stop Google from coming in maybe, or, or trying to stop um, other search engines coming in and, and mining your data. Um, kind of flag up that um, one, you know, there's a success point there in, in one sense for our industry, which is that, you know, Crossref of uh, the, 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 the text and data mining extensions to, to, to Crossref are now live. Um, and that kind of is one piece of the, of the puzzle, if you like, which is enabling part of this technology. Um, what, again, you know, we need to know um, a, a little bit more of the detail here. Now, you know, um, this, this, this is really about knowing your content, actually, uh, although it looks um, deeply technical. Um, you know, it, 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 it's partly to show what we can detect automatically within text. Um, but it's also to make us think a bit more carefully about what are the, the network effects around our content. Now, what I mean there is, is, is that this is stepping, again, outside of that kind of frame, which is the, which is the kind of paper-based view of the world, of thinking of papers as, as, as the kind of ultimate um, product of the, of, of, of the research process and where publishers engage. Thinking to the bigger picture, you know, how can we leverage that, that content resource that we're, that we're sitting on top of in other ways? How can we find connections between papers? Not necessarily to the level where we, you know, we've all been to, maybe our, at least some of us have, of, of those presentations where we think we can actually infer science directly from the facts that are in the paper, because that's a long way away still, really. What I'm talking about here is you know, finding me the relationships where, which allow me as a, as a researcher maybe to discover papers that are in my field but, or new authors, up and coming authors that are in my field, stuff that's on the edge of my field that I need to be engaged with. Um, so, you know, that kind of discoverability aspect. Um, 
you know, what are the other things that we might, the other benefits that we might get from this technology. Obviously, you know, um, if we're increasing discoverability, we can, we can also look at things like stickiness, the idea that we, we want people to stay around our content, that we want to, we want to find related content. Um, again, lowering that cost per download metric. Um, possibly being able to subset our content or slice and dice it to create new products. Um, um, and, you know, that kind of, the, the kind of internal production um, side of things, you know, is this going to help us to actually reduce production costs internally? Are we tagging stuff by hand that we don't need to tag by hand? Um, uh, you know, and can we then start to come into some of those more interesting types of things, which it does, you know, reflects this kind of network effect that I'm talking about here. If we, if we, if we, if we, if, are we able to type citations inside of, of, of content so that we're actually working out when a researcher or a scientist is, is, is giving us a, a citation in, in, in a paper, is that a, is, you know, is that, are they endorsing that paper that they're citing? Are they refuting it? Is it, you know, there are many, many different types of, 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 of citations. And this is something that, you know, is not, um, this is something that is, you know, it, it requires a deep degree of engagement. This isn't, this isn't just a, a buy it off the shelf and, and, and make it work type of operation. This is a, this is a thorough inside out re-examination of what your content's about. That kind of, you know, that side of content, there's the data side of content too. Again, we've, we, you know, Phil's already mentioned um, one or two of those kind of um, data initiatives and, and um, you know, the, the data bib site that, that John mentioned earlier, there are 978 um, repositories in, in there, 978 small or sometimes large um, repositories. We're proliferating repositories of, of scientific data here. And there's a kind of question there for publishers, which, which, is, which is this. It's, you know, you know, think about that for a moment. Data is a, is a first-class object. It's in, in terms of... Um, the, you know, and in terms of research output, it's something which, which has all, virtually all of the same properties as, as papers. You know, we need to be able to, um, we, we need to be able to register the fact that, that, that it's, you know, that, that a, a research is created. We need to, um, we need awareness, we need certification, we need archiving. We need to create reward around that so that when, when it's cited, the, 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 there's a, there's a, um, that, that, that we, we, we're registering the impact around it. Um, it seems, though, that publishers are not interested, really, in getting their hands dirty with data. It's something that we're, we're leaving to ones. That's why there are 978 data repositories, because it's something that we've, you know, historically said, it's not a paper, it's not really my business. It's kind of dirty and complicated, and I'm going to leave it to one side. Is there a business model in that? That's, that's what I'm asking you. Is there a business model in that for publishers? Clearly, some publishers think, that, think there is. Um, um, you know, that's probably a sign, I, I, I would say. Um, you know, does this help us serve the author better? Arguably, of course it does. It helps, it helps them to, to, to fulfill the mandate which might be surrounding their funding, um, which says they have to publish their data openly as well as their, as well as their papers. So there's a kind of conjunction of factors there, too, which, you know, it's this kind of author focus plus the kind of growth of e-science, the kind of the big data piece of science, if you like, which which is causing this proliferation of data repositories. And there's something there that we need to, we need to think about. Um, another one, analytics. Again, possibly not the most sexy topic in the world, but I'm, I'm not going to engage in, in sexy topics uh, exclusively this morning. How, how many people are, uh, are actively engaged in, in, in looking at web analytics now? OK, so there's a reasonable show of hands there. That's good. Um, you know, one of the things that I, you know, we, we're very focused on the kind of, um, uh, you know, looking at the kind of conventional analytics around publishing, citations, impact. Um, and we're kind of moving as an industry towards accepting these sort of alt metrics or the, the kind of per, per paper metrics. But are we looking at this, you know, um, from the kind of, if you like, the, the web perspective? Are we looking at this in terms of how we can, uh, you know, joining this up with the content mining, how we can actually develop our content in, into, into, into new areas, how we, can, how we can see which pieces of content are being well used, um, across a subject collection, for example. Um, are we joining this up with our social media strategy? You know, again, a segue to, 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 to David's piece there. Um, you know, if we're going to be asking our authors to, to promote and, and to use social media, how are we linking that back up with analytics so that we can actually have a complete degree, complete view of, you know, how well that performs? What's the success around, the, around that activity? Um, uh, 
so you know another important but possibly below the radar technology that we need to we need to make sure that we we we're fully integrating into our in, into our activities okay um user experience um so <laughs> Uh, this was a pretty hard one to find a slide for. So there's a kind of strange sort of user experience going on here. But, you know, one of the things that, and, you know, th this is a kind of, uh, forgive me for having a slightly tenuous link here to mobile, but we, we're seeing, you know, more than 10% of, 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 of accesses on some of the platforms that we build at Symantico are coming from mobile devices. And, you know, we, we need to, you know, in the B2C world, you know, just my touch point there, is, is the kind of theme that I've used to link this, this, you know, it would be, again, it would be madness not to think of how we were delivering effectively to mobile devices. But many, many, many publisher sites are not tooled up for, for, for mobile. That means you're losing that traffic or you're creating a poor user experience around, around uh, those users that are using mobile devices. Um, and it's not just about design or, or information architecture. It's about speed as well. User experience is, you know, if we're, if we're, if we're delivering um, poor user experience through slow websites, that's putting off our users. It's damaging our brands. What, what researchers are asking for, this is, this is, again, that's on that user experience thing. This is kind of what, um, you know, I wonder what sometimes whether we're solving, some, solving the wrong problems. You know, we know there's an endless conversation that goes on. Researchers want this. They want the PDF. That's what they're looking for. Maybe the two-column formats, oh, they'll deal with that. But, you, you know, the fact is that they're, they're, they're interested in, in, in the article, okay? Um, what we're giving them is something like this. Um, um, that bit, actually. Uh, and we wonder why... <laughs> Everybody keeps on pushing towards, I just want the PDF. It's because we're making that very hard to use. There's so much fluff around on the, uh, in terms of the user experience uh, on, on, the, on the website that we're making that content very, very difficult to use in that context. This is, a, this is something we can work with. This isn't, this, this, this isn't an intractable problem. This is about us possibly not possibly holding ourselves back from that kind of uh, over-design, kind of over-enthusiasm to add every single piece of functionality and, and stripping stuff back to, the, to, the kind of, to, to, to what researchers are actually looking for. Um, I'm going to wrap up um, at this point again just to end on that theme of user experience. You know, why, why is user-centered design important? Again, a technique that's, that's deeply, deeply embedded in the, in, in the B2C world. We need, to, we need to engage more fully with user-centered design. You know, again, this is about driving up usage. It's about being able to attract authors. If we don't have a well-designed process end-to-end, -end, this isn't just about content delivery. This is about, um, you know, all the way through from first engagement with, with an author. Um, you know, it, it, well, flip that round. You know, this is about being able to attract and retain authors in that way too, in an author-centered world. Um, you know, user ex user centered design. It's it's if we if we if we're designing a simpler system, it's going to be simpler and quicker and easier and cheaper to design it. So you have you know, in terms of your your development costs around those systems, that that might be potentially reducing those. Similarly, in terms of your operational support, in you know, well-designed systems cost less to support. Less, less customer support questions and queries. And finally, and probably most importantly, um, this is about protecting your brand. Poor user experience ultimately um, erodes and, 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 and devalues a brand. And so, you know, building, a, you know, excellent user experience around content is, you know, it has to be a, 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 a prerogative there. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up at that point. Thanks very much.